So what project do you think is the next big thing? Could you do you have anything that you would say it's it's gonna become the next something better than Ethereum and what Bitcoin is? What I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, and, and that's a secret, right? Uh, I will that's, honestly that's be disappointed if um, I, I set out, you know, I think a year ago to build something that was would improve in all of the inefficiencies I saw in the Ethereum ecosystem. I think the world needs a platform that is not Turing complete. I think the world needs a proof of work based platform. And I think the world needs just something that sits in between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, but it, it takes a long time to get there. Like I said, you can't launch a protocol anymore with just an algorithm. It has to be, like you guys said, a full platform. Um, I think in the interim, I hope Ravencoin really does take off. The Ravencoin team is passionate. The core team surprises me with how many bloody events they're at, hiding and lurking. I'm I'm always very happy to see uh, Tron at uh, random events that I frequent. Yeah, he he was one of our guests, by the way. I think the, he, the second one, yeah. the third guest on Nice Talk. Yeah. He's he's awesome, and I really yeah. I adore the Ravencoin vision. And just the community. The community is probably one of the nicest I've ever encountered in mining. So I hope that really takes off. Um, I think that they need to make a big investment into some serious applications. And right now their big thing is NFTs. I, I would implore any layer one protocol right now to just ignore NFTs. They're, they're not as cool as you think they are. Um, they're going to die out of use probably in, you know, uh, in this coming bear market. NFTs can be fantastic if we approach them in different ways. But right now, just taking an image and storing it in, in IPFS, that's that's not the future. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think NFTs so I, are like si similar to ICOs that we yes. saw in 2017. That's just like the same hype. You, mm -hmm. you, I was just putting money everywhere at the time. Uh, yeah, they can they can be phenomenal, right? They they really can be. They can be creative. They can be a way to empower artists. But a majority of the NFTs in the Ethereum ecosystem are not. And there's been a lot of damage done through the NFT space, um, and a lot of harm has come uh, through the NFT space as well. Um, and we're heading into a bear market. It's not going to be what people are truly using. NFTs are just a very small subset of what you can do in crypto. Um, so I think Ravencoin needs to really double down in application development and be thinking about um, interoperability with other chains to bring in that functionality and uh, really investing in application development. The, the thing that most, what, what makes a good blockchain project right now is product. Too many people focus on building technology and they don't focus on building great products. All users care about is products. The, the algorithm, your consensus mechanism, all of this, it all goes into building behind a better the product. Yeah. It's all behind the scenes. Your users don't really care, to be honest. Exactly. Like, exactly. you're they just care about like what cool things can i use what cool games can i play what what can i stake what can i yield farm like they want utility and nobody really cares about how gpu works but how many fps they can get like correct yeah, yeah. correct and so i don't think we're going to see an ethereum killer for 3 to 4 years i think it's going to be a market that will be dominated predominantly by Ethereum and Bitcoin still. I think we are going to see a big rise in privacy coins. And so I think this is a bright future for Monero and uh, Firo and uh, uh, all of the other wonderful privacy coins that I've forgotten the name of. Darrow. They're so private, you don't They're... know what they are. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think this is going to be the age of privacy coins because... 
Um, I think when we're heading into a recession, people are going to want to keep their money really close to their chest. And I do think we will have some other wars that break out and private cash is going to be king. So I think um, we're going to see a surge there. I don't think I'm really sad to say that um, as much as I adore Zcash from a technology uh, perspective, I, I worry Zcash has a lot of politics going on right now, which makes me a little sad. Um, but yeah, I think private cash will be king. And then three to four years later, we'll see some new type of cryptocurrency platform. And my big worry is that it might be too late. I think I think the space will have lost faith in proof of work. I think countries will have a lot of rules and uh, a lot of like, um, you know, things that are outlawed a lot more regulation around crypto, which will hamper this, this innovation. I think that exchanges are going to have a complete monopoly on the proof of stake space, which makes me even more sad and it's going to be hard. Um, And so whatever is being built now needs to be built with an eye towards what the ecosystem will look like in, uh, you know, in 2025 and 2026 and what that landscape will be. And, um it'll be difficult um bitcoin will still be king i'm i i know that ethereum maxis would love for ethereum to one day flip bitcoin but that will never never be the case um not not yet at least not unless you know something what could possibly allow ethereum to flip bitcoin is a ban on cryptocurrency mining here in the us because that would drain about i would say 400 500 billion from the bitcoin ecosystem because that would force all of your public companies and all of your um you know little infrastructure providers basically everyone in the us who has set up shop here to stop operations and that would be catastrophic and i hope that won't ever happen but you know what the president could wake up one day, be grouchy, and just create an executive order. <laughs> it could yeah, happen. But I think that I think the miners in the states have a lot of uh, lobbyist power. Uh, as far as not I as saw much in Miami. as you would think, yeah. not as much as you no. would think. They like to pretend that they do. Um, quite yeah. honestly, it's always be. So what is sad is that a lot of the U.S. miners like to pretend that they're very big and very important, and they definitely do have influence in specific states. But the reality is that, um, you know, the U.S. government, like Biden, makes the rules at the end of the day. Biden could issue an executive order, like ban all cryptocurrency mining for six months while they do their research on, you know, the energy consumption of the Bitcoin industry. Um, People like to pretend that Trump couldn't create his executive orders that he did around the Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese imports, yet he did. Um, And I, I am very disappointed by how the U S miners are. They, we all seem to have lost like the original point of Bitcoin in the, in the mining ecosystem right now. Everyone, you know, this year um, I attended a Satoshi Roundtable and then I also attended Bitcoin Miami. And at both places, there was just a lot of discussion about how do we appease regulators? How do we make regulators happy? That isn't what Bitcoin that, is about. That's, that's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly yeah. the opposite. Yeah. Um, but, and yeah. this, this is what happens when you create a public company, right? Because you have to do what is in the best interest of your shareholders. You have to do what is in the best interest of, you know, your company, which is making it money and making the powers that be happy. But what is best for Bitcoin right now is not public companies. What is best for Bitcoin is every single user in America, every single home having a Bitcoin miner inside of it with a node. What is the best for Bitcoin is all of the the Bitcoin that's being hoarded in these public companies, all of that being sufficiently dispersed to many, many users outside of the U.S. 
um, what is best for Bitcoin is not having 40% plus of the hash rate sitting in one country. Yeah. And I think that, that, that Bitcoin will be caged by the governments and we will not be able to see the, the maximum power that Bitcoin has. Yeah. I think that that will most likely happen based on where where are we going. Yes, and I'm I'm really sad uh, for that to happen. And the the thing yeah. is that miners could really if they if they put their heads together like collectively all of them, they could be a force to be reckoned with. They could all of a sudden fund Bitcoin core developers. They could fund new innovation, new products. Imagine if all of the mining hash power just took one to two percent of their total hash rate and dedicated that towards Bitcoin core development. The, yeah, it would be phenomenal, right? They'll never do that, which is very sad. I mean, and because the mine, whole mining industry was like is getting more and more like more uh, capital investment, and yeah. investors want to take money. They want money back. They're not in for the technology they're in for the money not for the correct the the which is why the we project need, as well yeah. yeah and that's why we need to really double down and think about how do we best decentralize bitcoin and the way that big public companies can help today is start opening up offices and opening up sites outside of america make sure that you're doing your part to ensure that the U.S. only has 20% maximum hash rate. It shouldn't have anywhere close to 40%. Even 30% is too much. Really double down and spend some time. It's about where the physical machines are. So, you know, using a, a foreign pool doesn't help. Like, let's make sure that machines are sufficiently dispersed. Um, set up smaller sites. Set up, you know one to five megawatts in in countries and in regions that have uh, not a lot of economic growth. Hire local people to help operate and maintain these farms. Get them exposed to Bitcoin that way. As a public company, you have the, the capital. You have access to the capital markets to do this. And it's a great thing. And I mean, Jack Dorsey and Block are proving that you can do just that. You can expand overseas, um, you know, with with a U.S. public company. So go do that. Uh, if you truly care about Bitcoin and you care about building a company that will be here 30 years in the future, like every public company needs to be sitting down at a round table and thinking, well, how do we do, what do we do in the next two years that will set us up for a good place in the future? Um, there should be like an organization like there is for uh, petrol, like uh, OPEC, how is it called? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There should be something similar for Bitcoin. Like, Well, Bitcoin. they tried, right? They tried the, <laughs> the mining yeah. council. They tried that mining council, yeah. right? With, with Sailor. That, that was only like a handful of people. Right? I mean, The problem is, again, it's the, it's the public companies that probably don't have Bitcoin's best interest at heart. They can love Bitcoin. Right, but ultimately they are bound by shackles to do what makes their shareholders Perfect. happy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's the um, the issue. Yeah, I I agree that I'm just really sad, and I wish that there was more I could do to help. Um, I I feel sad that I contributed to the centralization of Bitcoin hash rate in America through through uh, my former role, and I think you know. I made up my mind um, last year after I got COVID, I went through a deep period of self-reflection. So in 2020 and 2021, and I decided, you know what, for the, the next 10 years of my life, I'm just going to devote my, my time, my energy, all of my wealth to trying to decentralize Bitcoin as much as I can in any way that I can. And um, I think it's needed because, you know, this industry is still young. People don't realize that 13 years isn't a long time. Like it's, it's, it could be wiped out tomorrow. We have to really,